Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to move to Mr. Vardanian. Uh, Mr. Vardanian, the Russian economy. Uh, you're sitting on the board of Novatech, a huge uh, energy producer. Um, you know, Russia, again, is, has always been dependent on natural resources and uh, has used it to its benefits, but this does not come without a cost. Uh, this has uh, not always been, um, you know, played well, uh, especially if you look at very long-term plans. So my first question to you, and I have a, a series of questions to you, um, is this, uh, has the Russian economy um, too much dependent on natural resources, or are there uh, certain uh, moves by the economists in Russia to really diversify the Russian economy and make it more versatile and not so dependent on um, natural resources? Uh, <clears throat> definitely, uh, Russia is perceived like the country which fully depends from the oil and gas, and if you look at our export uh, <clears throat> uh, numbers, it's uh, showing it's all mineral, mostly mineral uh, exports. Uh, but I think what has changed again, and as I'm trying to describe always my investors, I'm, I, I was an investment banker 22 years and I tried to explain what Russia is not a black and white, it's not like oil and gas and nothing else. Uh, we have a retail company who started from zero, the guy is now worth 20 billion dollars and is a retail chain all over Russia with 12,000 bra branches, the shops over all, uh, all the regions. We're getting um, IT companies like Yandex, it's a Russian, Yandex is a Google uh, uh, analogy, and it's very successful. We are getting more and more companies in different sectors, and if you look at the Russian economy, one of the advantage of the Russia compared to China, India, or Brazil is less restrictions. For example, the, in the banking sector, is not restriction for capital flight, no restrictions for uh, being owner of 100% of the banks. Uh, and it's why we have industries in Russia, like beer industry, fully owned by foreigners. We have uh, some industries where people not realizing the, how uh, much foreign investment in some of the areas is, uh, exists and how big. For example, the car producing industry. We got now more car and car sell, uh, was sold in Russia than many European other countries and uh, many, all the major player of, of the car producing companies is production uh, operating in Russia. And it's, it's showing transformation. It's going slowly what we wanted, but it's happening definitely. We got now from 85 regions in Russia, uh, 138 nationalities living in 85 regions, and it's very different from by time zone, by weather, by mentality. We're in t 10, 12 regions which don't have any oil and gas, but we're doing very well. Again, it's not like one color. It's a uh, need to look Russia more deeper and more careful about looking at the different regions, different uh, industries. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to ask you another question, Mr. Vardanian, and that has to do with the. Uh, with the Russian uh, banking system and the interest rates. Uh, recently, last month, Oleg Deripaska, who's the billionaire owner of uh, United Rusal, he said that uh, policymakers in Russia have sucked all blood from the Russian economy, and he was basically referring to the fact that uh, they're not cutting interest rates and doing actually the contrary. They're actually raising rates. Um, and he felt that this is going to have an impact, a very bad one, on the Russian economy. Do you, do you agree with this? Uh, how do you feel, um, you know, w what should policymakers in Russia be doing now? Uh, if you look at the numbers, it's really something going <coughs> unique in the current environment because you look at Russia, basically was no budget deficit, very good currency reserve, no big debt, it's less than 30% of GDP. Uh, basically, oil price very high and country not growing. And you get inflation like 6% of the case, high but not double digit. But so I would say we are facing a situation where the other countries, like developed countries, the debt is growing and becoming above 100%. And you're getting some situations which not everybody can explain what is going on. Why is not high inflation in the uh, West happening? Why is inflation in Russia stayed so high? And what is doing Central Bank is in Russia, we're trying to balance between the two different problems. Because on one hand, if you are we're getting so much export revenue from the dollar side, and this is why we become bringing the ruble stronger will kill our industry, and this is why we are trying to keep the ruble not so strong. At the same time, if you're doing weaker rubles, the capital flight is happening very strong, and we have a, some other element will be creating higher inflation, mm -hmm. which is creating the bigger uh, problem for the uh, population, which has been the last 20 years under big pressure of the inflation and other instability. So I would say in the central bank today is trying to balance between two different problems. Unfortunately, again, it's the uh, price that we're paying is uh, now we're facing the not enough uh, big economic growth. 
on the end, we have quite stable situation from the from many other countries. Which I will say a few words about Europe. I will say, honestly, on one hand, is recovery starting, but at the same time, let's be honest, most of reform not happened. The trade union continue very strong in Europe. The unemployment very high. The young generation, if you go and ask young generation about venture startups, we don't believe we can do. We, we, can, we can become successful in Europe. I mean, in Europe, continue facing very serious challenge about transformation from the old model to the new model. And just recovery happening because the, the collapse didn't happen, but the Greece continue facing the same challenge, Italy is facing the same challenge. So I would say, I think we don't need to have an illusion about uh, everything is over. We just been lucky, but we didn't face serious collapse, but transformation needs to be in all the countries, including Russia. And my strong belief that with the Europe and Russia and the CIS countries, we need to come work closer together because it's only one, uh, one uh, option to be successful for both sides. Without this, we cannot do anything. Both part will be face some big challenges. Right. So things are not over. You're saying, but you know, maybe we can be optimistic that they're not deteriorating too much. Um, Professor Reibling, um, I'd like to ask you: How do you select the countries you decide to invest in? Obviously, I guess one criteria would be to have uh, good uh, local managers and partners, like you have here in Israel, Profimex. Uh, and how do you how do you actually select? Uh, I mean, you're in Boston and. You have to choose between different uh, countries in Europe, Asia, uh, or other opportunities uh, in the United States? Well, of course, whatever asset class you are working in, uh, you always should invest in management and talent and not in factories or buildings or whatever, or products. So we carefully pick our managers much more than anything else. And we would not operate in any country where we do not have our own established identity and qualified management. But uh, as uh, history obviously is also not a uh, precise science, uh, we still can learn from history. Uh, and what we can learn is that countries that I mentioned three parameters before, inflation rates, cap rates, and interest rates, there are two more. And these are really the ones that are very reliable in predicting the future, even so the future usually doesn't happen when we want it, but sooner or later it does. So, and these two parameters are, one, as my uh, panelist colleague from Russia already told us, is uh, population growth and employment growth. Uh, population growth uh, is probably less significant uh, after all than employment growth. So if you look around the world uh, or look around Europe and uh, try to find countries that do have qualified employment growth, um, it's a pretty rare picking. S but there are other countries in the world that we feel uh, do offer significant opportunities because they not only grow by population, but also by quality and uh, size of employment. Uh, such as, for example, India, to mention one, uh, but also Turkey is a good example, and uh, to a certain degree also Russia. Needless to say, all that has to be embedded in political stability, which is uh, an element of our assessment that we leave to others. Uh, but we read the newspaper, and of course, uh, investors tend to be influenced by information, biased or not, uh, much more than by facts. So in that respect, uh, we feel that we also have to consider the psychology of the goalkeeper. And there was a wonderful psychological study done here in Israel about the reaction of a goalkeeper in a penalty shootout, whether he jumps left or right or stays. I think right now, after staying put for too long, people jump in all directions. Probably better to calm down and stay in the middle. Uh, and this is the policy we are pursuing. But, but if you talk about the goalkeeper, um, if I understand correctly, that he wants to jump uh, just because he needs to show that he's doing something and not standing still, um, you know, the, the, I guess the other school of thought is, and I've heard many, many successful people say it, that the most important thing they've ever said is no to a deal. They're just sitting and saying, no, this is no good, no good, no good. Um, and that actually saved them uh, many, many times. How do you balance between the two? Well, this is really the, uh, the business of our investors. We don't tell the investor whether they should jump or not. They should make their decision. They just can show him uh, what the more likely outcome is. If it's a left-footed player or a right-footed player, there's some correlation between them. So as I said, some very simple observations, such as the ones I mentioned about employment growth and 
population growth are more reliable than public opinion. Uh, I would not invest in certain countries just because uh, the newspapers write favorably about it or not. And particularly also, as all of us uh, agree here on this panel, I would invest when everybody thinks it's a bad time to invest. Okay, thanks. Uh, Micha, um, your experience over the last 12 months, uh, closing a deal uh, in Europe, is this uh, simple? Is this uh, something more complex? Are you confronting any issues that you haven't confronted five years ago? Well, our experience uh, in, in the last 12 months or so uh, is that working on, on transactions is uh, much easier, as I mentioned. The, the, at least the sellers are uh, more flexible. As, uh, as you know, we are uh, not only uh, the Kukerman here, but we are a part of uh, uh, a global network of uh, M&A advisors in over 40 countries. So if I said earlier that uh, you should go uh, leave the room and go uh, uh, look for uh, opportunities, I can still stay here because I have uh, partners all over, all over Europe and all over the world that, that share the work with me. And they, the, the interesting part is that uh, there are many offers, many interesting and attractive uh, opportunities uh, coming uh, mostly uh, from our European partners uh, in industry, in services, in banking, uh, and uh, of course in, in real estate uh, opportunities. Uh, uh, for example, uh, I would mention a few examples of uh, companies for sale that our network is currently looking for buyers. Uh, one is one of the leading uh, IT uh, groups in Europe that uh, is looking for buyer. Uh, one of the largest amusement park in, in the Netherlands, uh, Germany uh, border region uh, that is looking uh, for buyer. And there is a sector, uh, I would say, most of, of the sector that is uh, now in a process of integration, and this is why uh, there are many offers to buy, and this is the automotive parts and system sector. Uh, and uh, we are offered with companies uh, from uh, uh, Germany, from Spain, from Italy, uh, companies of very high quality that feel that they are too small uh, to play in the market and they want to be integrated or bought by larger groups and this is the opportunity for buyers to become a more significant player by buying uh, another, another company and having the uh, <coughs> facility in another country.